Hi, Peter Charles of Hooked for Life Fly Fishing. And in this video, let's talk about keeping our flies sparse. Now, can we get away with heavily dressed flies? Most definitely. Can they catch fish? Most definitely. But I think as a general rule, uh, unless you're imitating bottom uh, oriented species, like sculpins and little suckers and things like that, you want a fairly sparse fly. And really think of it in terms of where you're fishing the fly and what it's imitating. So uh, I've got, you know, selection of six flies here. And these are really bo bottom oriented species. That's what they're meant to uh, imitate. Uh, these are more in like in the minnow family, which are, is a very thin, elegant fish. So if you have a big bulky fly, it doesn't do a good job of imitating a delicate fish. My brown trout weemer looks thick, but it isn't. It's actually quite sparse and it slims down quite well. It does puff up a bit and it does a wonderful job of imitating chubs and daces and things of that, like that, which tend to be a little bit bulkier. So I'm aiming for these uh, flies to, you know, be imitating of, of certain species. These are more like those bottom dwelling species. And I use these primarily for bass. But here's part of the problem with the thinking that goes into these designs. This fly has a brass bead and some lead in the body. It'll get down on its own, no trouble. These two are unweighted. And that rabbit is going to hold those up. And they will not sink that well. So it, it really, you know, when you're fishing rabbit strip wings, I mean, they're nice and bulky and they look big in the water but you better have some lead in them. And, and these two really are just not going to fish very well. You're, you've got a, a fly that's designed for bottom uh, species, but it's not going to get to the bottom. So I'm not saying you won't have a, a bass hit it. Yes, you will. Okay. I've hit bass high up in the water column with some of these flies. But the reality is you want to have your fly oriented towards the species that you're imitating and you want it to fish where those species live. So, Flies like this will work high up in the water column and low down for that matter. These are better off lower down in the water column, but they better be built to do the job. I mean, even a fly like this one here um, with the thick yarn body, it will still penetrate well and get down and it's nice and sparse. It will still look slim when it goes through the water uh, and it will still look like a realistic bait fish. You know, so, so with the... Uh, the, the um, black nose days here, it will slim down quite well and it'll penetrate and, and it'll look quite slim in the water. It'll be fine. So those species that we're trying to imitate with our streamers, keep that in mind. What do they actually look like? What's their profile like? Are they skinny? And the other advantage for going with um, sparse flies is they you get some translucency to them. I mean, brown trout weemer and these two will be quite translucent in the water. These guys won't be. But if you look at those bottom dwelling species, they're, they're thick. They're not translucent. They're just dark blobs when you look at them. And, you know, these do a good job of imitating dark blobs. But when you're looking at bait fish high up in the water column, they're quite translucent. And that's why you need that sparseness. As a general rule, I would say keep your um, flies on the sparse side when you're fishing for, uh, high up in the water, col water column, imitating, you know, regular minnows. And as I say, then you can go to the heavier stuff, heavier dress stuff when you're imitating fish that live on the bottom because they tend to be thicker and more opaque. But when, I, I'm, when I'm out with somebody and they show me their fly box and they're all proud of what they've done, a lot of the streamers are way overdressed. They're just too bulky. They won't swim well. The drag from all that bulk will hold the, the streamer up. You, I think we underestimate how much damage drag does to our presentations. That if you've got a, a really bulky fly, it's, it will keep your sink tip up or even your sinking line, it'll keep it up and it won't be that easy to get down. So, you know, if you want to get down to the bottom, it counts to be counterproductive is You've got a high drag fly that you want to get down to the bottom, so you better have some weight to get it down there because it'll want to hang up if you don't. You'd be surprised how high these run uh, because of their, their lack of weight, even with the sinking line. They, they don't want to get down. So there's all these elements you've got to keep into mind. You know, does it imitate 
where we're fishing it? Does it imitate the species where we're fishing it? Uh, will it get down on its own, or do I have, you know, it, or is it going to hang up on me because of the drag or the materials made out of? And it, you know, it does it have the translucency we want? And as I say, you have more freedom to to fish these uh, delicate, shall we say, translucent, very sparse flies. They do extremely well for uh, to imitate bait fish. They catch a lot of fish. And, uh, you know, I've done very well with sparse flies over the years. And as I say, it's usually the single biggest problem I see with people streamers is they overdress them. They're big and they're bulky and they're ugly and, you know, and they won't fish the way they expect them to be fished. And sometimes with too much dressing, they even kick on their sides. You know, there's all sorts of different problems we can get into with overdressed flies. So keep that in mind. Keep them sparse unless you're aiming for a bottom species, you know, don't overdress them. Make sure they're translucent and, uh, you know, they will fish extremely well. Cheers.